Before I was I, in this amazingly small apartment, I was actually homeless. What's up guys? I'm Jillian Rogue. Today I'm going to be talking about the years that I spent being homeless. This is my first attempt at any sort of like story time video. I just kind of thought that the whole time I've been on YouTube I haven't really gotten too personal. So maybe it's time to sort of let you guys know a bit about who I am and the stuff that I've been through because you better believe I have a lot of shit that has happened in my life and a lot of stories to tell. Now I didn't write a script for this video or anything, it's simply just going to be me sitting down looking at the camera and talking about my experiences being homeless. So basically this all started when I was about 17 years old. Uh, suffice it to say for now that there was a falling out with my family and they pretty much left me in Boise, Idaho. Now I'm from Tucson, Arizona. I grew up here. I was born here. I'm back in Tucson, Arizona now. Uh, so Boise, Idaho was a long way away from home and I knew nobody. My family left me there with nothing but a suitcase full of clothes, I had no money, I had nothing to my name, no car, and I didn't know anyone. As you can imagine, this was a really, really traumatic time for me. Imagine being 17, 18, in another state, completely alone, no money, you don't even know where you're going to sleep that night, and you don't know anyone. Within the first day, I actually met this guy who was driving around in a car. He claimed to be 24, but he was actually 30 years old. And I kind of like immediately clung to him, probably because I was 17, 18 and abandoned in another state by my family and I didn't know one. I was desperate to like make some sort of connection with someone. And I didn't even know, like I said, where I was going to sleep that night. So I ended up staying with him and we got drunk at his friend's house and uh, hung out and we ended up hooking up and we got together after that and came to find out that he was actually living in his car. I lived out of his car with him and I don't really want to go into this in too much detail on this video, this is another story time, but he became incredibly abusive. Just trust me when I say that there was no easy escape, I couldn't leave, I was basically held hostage. Uh, for about a year that I lived with him in his car and before I know a lot of people are gonna be like oh you could have just left I couldn't he literally restrained me from leaving and I'm only saying this much because I feel like it's necessary to the rest of the story but even if I could leave again imagine being 17 years old thousands of miles away from home and this is the only person that you know you're not gonna be that quick to leave but that's neither here nor there because he physically restrained me from leaving for about a year. Anyway, when I finally did get away from him, I uh, was in a situation, I'm not going to say too much about it now because this could be another video, where I lived in his car alone. I kept his car, lived in it alone for several months. When this was going on, I typically slept in parking lots to Walmart. Uh, when we were together, we would find places like in the wilderness to sleep, but I was too scared to do that alone because it's creepy being out there alone. Now, people would see me in the morning sleeping in my car to Walmart, and that alone is a lot of stories in itself. There's a lot of fucked up people, but also a lot of really good people who would see me and offer help or things like that. For my day-to-day -day life, I usually spent my days trying to get food and hopefully some sort of hotel room or something for that night, uh, while I was also trying to save up money to get back to Tucson. I would do this by, first I started out, um, driving the car around and telling people that I was out of gas and asking if they would help me with gas money. 
but that really didn't work that well and I eventually got so low and desperate that I actually would make a sign on a piece of cardboard that said homeless and hungry please help and I would stand at the entrance to Walmart in Boise, Idaho and ask people to help me. A lot of people did and a lot of people really gave me hope by helping me and really helped push me through the years I was homeless. But there was a lot of really horrible people too. I had people scream at me to get a job. I had people throw handfuls of pennies at me while I was standing there. I had people, for example, there was a gas station by, right by the Walmart and I would panhandle holding a sign and then I would go in that gas station to buy some sort of lunch or something for that day. And one day the manager to that gas station, it was a flying J, uh, he, just started yelling at me, literally yelling at me, telling me to get out of his store because my kind wasn't welcome in his store. And even though I was a paying customer, my money wasn't allowed in that store, that I was ruining it for others, and that he was ashamed to have my kind in his store. Now, I can't tell you how much stuff like this hurts. And I've grown as a person, but throughout the years, I just think of people who are still doing this to homeless people, and yes, a lot of homeless people are on drugs, and some might not be good people, but a lot of them are just mentally ill. And a lot of them are also just in bad circumstances, much like I was in. And I probably wouldn't have gotten to where I'm at now if some people didn't come through and help me. So I kind of want to, part of my reason for telling the story is I kind of want to get it out there that... Homeless people are people too. They're not all drunks, they're not all crackheads, and a lot of them just really do need help. And unfortunately, while you can't probably get them a house and help them enough to actually get them out of being homeless, at least showing them that kindness will help get them through what they're going through. So anyway, I continued to live in my car for a while in Boise, Idaho, and then I ended up meeting up one of the guy I dated, one of his friends, and I lived with him in his house for about another year. While I lived there, I met another guy who I started dating, and me and him kind of broke off together and went and lived in his car alone for a while. <laughs> but after about like six months of living in his car with him and doing the same thing, panhandling for money, I got a job at Subway and I was able to save up. Uh, I bought my own little rinky dink car and I drove down to Tucson. Now I drove down to Tucson thinking I would be welcomed with open arms from my family and they would be so sorry for leaving me and want to know all about what I went through, but I couldn't have been more wrong. They let me stay with them for about a week before they finally kicked me out one day and again I took my car and was homeless down here in Tucson. I did the same thing. Fortunately I was living in my car but I was, you know, panhandling, trying to eat, trying to survive and I eventually got a job at a call center down here. I would go to work every day after sleeping in my car all night and I would get ready in the bathroom and I would try to not tell anyone about what I was going through because I was so ashamed. One night while I was sleeping in my car, a cop stopped me and I didn't pay my insurance because I was so broke and barely working to survive I couldn't even afford a place to live. I was living in my car while I was working and because I didn't have insurance at 4 in the morning while I was asleep in my car, he towed my car from me. In my car I had literally every material possession I ever owned, um, everything that was ever important to me and it was all lost after that. I couldn't afford to get it back. I kept working at the call center, I tried to save money and I just went and got a really cheap apartment down on 29th and Alvernon in Tucson which if you're not from here that is an extremely extremely poor and ghetto area of town. The apartment was only like $400 for a two bedroom but there was no AC and again if you're not from Tucson it gets to about 120 degrees in the summer and it was awful. I eventually lost my job at the call center and only stayed at the apartment for about three or four months before they evicted me. After that I had nothing. I had no job, no savings, and no car to live in. I stayed with one guy for a while but he was a drunk and 
that just turned out bad. So then I was on my own, literally living on the streets with a backpack full of a few belongings that I was able to get from like Salvation Army and whatnot. I would spend my days just trying to eat. I lost about 90 pounds and I've always been a big girl so I still wasn't skinny but that's a lot of weight to lose. I remember just being downtown and just being so desperate for like food or anything I would ask people to help me out and a lot of the people downtown are like corporate people and they were so rude to me. Again they would yell at me to get a job, I had one person spit on me one time. It was a lot to go through. I used to go to Brugger's downtown every day and scrounge out scrounge out what I could for a bagel or something. Uh, but one day, the same thing that happened at that Flying J in Boise, Idaho, happened in Brugger's. The manager apparently decided she was tired of having a homeless person come into her store every day and kicked me out in front of everyone, saying that I was no longer welcome because my kind made other people not want to come in. After that, I went to this other store uh, just around the corner from Brugger's, and again, after about a week of going there every day, the same thing happened. Yet another manager decided that I was too repulsive to have in his store, that I was so repulsive that it made other people not want to come in, and he yelled at me to get out and flat out told me how repulsed he was, again, by my kind. This is only like a small amount of the atrocities I experienced when I was homeless. I, I, again, I don't even want to be saying this on camera, but I was jumped, I was raped, I was, had trash thrown at me. I've had a lot, a lot, a lot of bad things happen to me simply because I was homeless and other people did not like that. Just because I was homeless and they made all these assumptions about me in their head and decided that I was less than human and deserved the worst of worst treatments because I couldn't afford a home like they could. Or because I was too lazy to get a job, apparently. Or because I must have been on drugs. Little did they know I would have sold my soul for just a job at McDonald's. Little did they know that when you're that low, it's that much harder to get up. How do you get a job when you look like that? No one wants to hire the homeless girl, you know? It's just, it's like this endless cycle and people don't realize that the lower you go in life, the harder it is to get anything. How do you go get a job when every day you're worried about what you're going to eat for that day? It's just this endless cycle and people don't realize it at all. So I continued to live on the streets and I did that for about a year. After that, I met this guy um, and he let me stay with him and we had a very complicated relationship, but he lived in a house that had no running water and no electricity and the ceiling was cracked, it was roach infested, mouse infested, I fell through the floorboard several times, uh, you couldn't shower, you couldn't flush the toilet, I literally had to line the toilet with a plastic grocery bag and poop in a bag, then pick it up and go throw it out in the garbage can. Yeah, I, I did that. For six years, I lived like that. And I know, again, a lot of people aren't going to understand why I stayed so long, but for about half the time, for about three years, I got a job and I was saving up money to move out. I was just so nervous of being homeless again that I wanted to make sure that I saved up a substantial amount of money to where I could go get an apartment and a car and still have a little bit of cushion so that I know I'm never going to be homeless. Because you got to understand, up until then, it was like I always lost my job or I always lost my place or, you know, I would be okay, but then shit would happen and I'd be homeless again. So I really wanted to make sure that I had more than enough money to fall back on uh, before I just left the one place that I had, even though it was so horrible. To this day, I literally have like PTSD and cockroaches are a huge trigger for me. I know everyone thinks they're gross, but they like induce pure panic when I see them because I lived in a place where they would crawl up my legs while I was trying to eat. 
I worked 10 times harder than any normal person would just to shower, shit, eat, and survive for years. I'm 28 years old now and I was homeless on and off since I was 17 uh, and lived in that shack with no running water or anything for six years. Here's some video footage I took before I left of the conditions of the house that I lived in. Room. I don't sleep in here, I don't go in here, it's too disgusting for me to even walk into. Um, so yeah, this is the bathroom. It's a toilet where I have to poop in a bag. The bathtub, we tried running the hose in here to try to take a shower just from the hose. It doesn't work, all the water went out all over the floor because the plumbing's not hooked up. See the floor is all cracked. So disgusting. Roof is caving in. It says help. How ironic is that? <laughs> yes. And then this is the living room. This is where I've been sleeping for the past six years is on this futon. It's where Michael sits and watches his TV, his PlayStation, his TV, his antenna. That's an air conditioner, but we stopped using it because we didn't have enough electricity, like running through extension, since we use, you know, extension cords and stuff, we didn't have enough to power it, so we use that. That's a swamp cooler. Um, that's the front door. It doesn't work, though, because the wood is all rotting, so there's no holes for the screws to go into. Um, so it's literally just leaning there. Do you see all this sand? It's literally like sand. I just slept two or three days ago. And this is what's left. Yeah. And then we have the roof is about to cave in here too. Um, this heater thing that doesn't work. I only eat off paper plates and stuff. Come on, boy. Come on, Blue. This is the kitchen. This is why I only eat off paper plates, because this is that disgusting. <laughs> Stove doesn't work. And this is how we leave, a laundry room or whatever. This wood's all breaking. I fell through the wood twice, both here and here. So yeah, that is it. That's where I've lived for the past six or seven years. Leaving that place was honestly hard for me because it was the first, like, home that I had known since my parents left me in Idaho. It was the first place that I stayed at consistently for six years. I was terrified to leave. I, like, I've been out of that place for two years now, and I'm still scared every day that one day I'll end up homeless again. Uh, it was a huge transition for me to leave that place. It was terrifying. But I saved up the money, I went and got a little car for myself in a one bedroom apartment. It was a big transition being able to move into an apartment where I had electricity, I had running water. You don't realize the things people take for granted where you can actually poop and flush it down the toilet, where you can actually take a shower, wash laundry, where you don't have to go to a hose and fill up buckets of water and then carry the buckets of water back to the house just to wash some dishes or to wash your work clothes for that day or to bathe in. So that's kind of where I came from. That's a little bit of history of what I went through. I hope that maybe this sheds some light on how someone out there views homeless people. I'm out of that situation now and I work three jobs. I am constantly working and most importantly, I'm trying to achieve my dream that is YouTube. I know how lame that probably sounds, but honestly, YouTube is the only thing I've ever really been passionate about, and I am so passionate about it. It would just be a dream come true if I could turn doing YouTube into some sort of career. I would just, I would die. I would, my life would be like complete, <laughs> as lame as that sounds. And although I'm much better off financially now, I still, I'm not rich, I'm still living in a one bedroom apartment, you know what I mean? I'm, I haven't made it yet, but I'm light years away from where I was. Other than that, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Again, I work three jobs, I work a lot, but I try to upload as much as possible. So if you could please subscribe, it would really mean a lot to me.
Let me know if you guys have had any sort of history of homelessness or what your view was on homeless people and if it's changed at all from watching this video or just what your general thoughts are. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys for today. So thank you for watching this video. And alright, all my little poop kings and queens, I will see you later.